Have you ever noticed that when the eyes are separated a touch too far, as human observers we immediately notice, any further and the face becomes uncanny. This isn't as unusual as you may think either. Telecanthus or hypertellarism is the medical term for increased distance between two points and is often common in patients suffering from cleft malformations or congenital defects like fetal alcohol syndrome. It is this link back to a physical health anomaly that makes this specific feature so sensitive to human perception. If you scroll on TikTok, there are real men and women with this feature, an increased canthal distance from eye corner to corner. And unfortunately, this is the most commented feature for these individuals. Going back to the idea that the eye spacing is a highly sensitive trait because of links back to health anomalies, even if they have nothing wrong with them. In terms of physical aesthetics, the problem is not necessarily the disproportionate distance of the eyes, but the fact that the eyes often become smaller and beadier to fit within the bone structure. As with any facial feature, a deviation too far from the normal becomes unusual. And as many pieces of research have time and time again shown, the most statistically average value is often within the realm of most attractive. The established average that trauma surgeons use is 28 to 38 millimeters for both sexes from Friday of 1980. Buhadana 2022 shows from 22,000 patients and 118 ethnicities the average distances, where chances are if you fall outside of this range or your ethnicity, people may notice or comment on your eye spacing. One of the reasons why this is such a sensitive facial feature that people notice is because 78% of the adult eye spacing is determined by one year of age and increases very slowly from there on out. Meaning that not only is it determined from birth, but also an ecologically honest indicator of genetic quality. It is not something that can be changed or hidden with makeup, and surgery here is complex, so this feature is essentially you, and that's why it's the first thing that observers pick up on to define a face, as we see in those TikTok examples, even though they really shouldn't. Pamela M. Pallet and colleagues used four experiments to obtain optimal length and width ratios that maximize facial attractiveness. If you remember the statistically average values for any feature, dental or facial is often the most attractive because it is genetically the least variant option. Attractiveness scores followed a curvilinear function with the width ratio, meaning that too wide or too narrow set eyes are both considered lower than a range of normal values, so that 28 to 35 millimeter that most of the population falls into. In this graph, there is surprisingly strong correlation and we see this trend in a lot of other studies for facial features. So I consider it quite valid and intuitively we can all agree that length ratios of 0.52 and 0.35 are just too much ratio. As for experiments 1 and 2, the researchers systematically varied the length ratio by altering the vertical distance between the eyes and unsurprisingly there is also a range of mid facial lengths that perform better than others. A lot of women especially get the philtrum tucks and lift lips presumably to get a more harmonious length ratio. This isn't a cultural beauty standard either and there is a strong preference for marginally shorter mid faces in both the east and the west. More than meets the eye by Sanjay Naran and colleagues suggest that African and Asian ethnicities were more likely to perceive decreases in submissiveness, threat, intelligence and attractiveness with widened distances. Respondents between 18 to 25 were highly sensitive to the distance of the eyes and most interestingly an eye spacing 10% more than normal were rated as the most attractive for women. This supports the other graph where 10% from normal would typically fall into this range. All of this is to say that when the distance between the eyes is roughly around 46% of the entire facial width, it will be rated high on the attractiveness scale. That doesn't mean that if you don't match this exact number, you cannot be attractive. That is not what the study is controlling for, but much like betting on a horse, 46% is the safest bet for producing an attractive face which is still attractive, but the study doesn't control for eye sizes. Marginally wide set eyes are typically larger, like Anya Taylor-Joy, who fits this 10% deviation. Larger eyes are often considered a feminizing facial trait because men, due to sexual dimorphism, have smaller, more well-protected eyes. Women, on the other hand, have larger eyes. Eyes that are too wide set, however, start to become smaller, almost beadier due to reduced spacing one thing to note with eye spacing, the first study didn't control for eye sizes which often increase with width up to a point until they start to get smaller and benefit women more. The second and third studies were not balanced for male and female participants but we can appreciate a general trend. 
most attractive women in the modeling industry do have slightly larger and often more spaced eyes than the opposite. Men similarly also have more spaced eyes than not spaced with greater horizontal width as opposed to vertical width. While there exists an optimal range for aesthetics, as with most things, a touch above average is often the best for standing out. Realistically, there is not much you can do to change this spacing other than surgery. You can lengthen your eyebrows to be more proportionate to that distance, or you can get a canthoplasty, which is a relatively less invasive surgery to change the appearance of where the eye starts and ends, but it doesn't actually move its physical location. If you want more personalized advice for your situation, you can order an aesthetics assessment from our in-house team of doctors to consider all of your options if this is something that truly concerns you.